Hello and welcome to our next video of Control Engineering. Remember this picture from the last video? Transfer element. Yeah, there's a system and we said we're going to describe this system now in a mathematical way. And we see there are a number of inputs, a number of outputs. We want to make it a little bit, a little bit easier, let's say. Yeah, we want to make it a little bit easier. So we are only want to describe a system. Yeah? So this is our system. And we only want to have one input and one output. So here we have xi. And the input, which can be time variant. Yeah? And we have the output here, which also can be time variant. And now, now we want to think about how the input might produce the output. Okay? We want to develop a system theory. Yeah? We want to, to get a transfer function. We want to get something which is transferring from here to here and we want to describe this mathematically in a way that it is commonly applicable. Yeah? So we don't really care if this here is, I don't know, the population, this is the output, or uh, this is uh, birth rate or whatever, yeah? or if this is heating power, this is temperature, or it, sh it shall be applicable for any possible control. Yeah? regardless if it's technical or sociological or economical and, and we want to develop a real system theory. This means we are a little bit abstract. So let's think about what our output might might consist of. Okay, so I want that there is written output equals. What might influence my output. Of course the input. Of course the input. So xi. And of course it's not just the input. Yeah. It's scaled somehow. So I just add a vector. Yeah? R0 multiplied by xi. This is one possibility. Proportional. Proportional. Pro uh, uh, but the output is proportional to the input. Okay. This might be possible. Okay. What also might be possible is, so this, this would be, for instance, uh, a spring. Okay. If this is the input, is the force, which pulls the string together and the output is the spring force, then this would be the spring constant. Yeah. One possibility. Another possibility is that the output is not derived from the input, but from the change rate of the input. Okay, so we add another term here, plus, and we are talking about the change rate of the input. So this means the change of the input by time. Yeah. And also here, this might be also, also scaled. Okay. Change rate of the input might influence the, the, out, the size of the output. Yeah. And of course, there is the next, the next change rate, and the next change rate, and the next rate, the change rate of the change rate, the change rate of the change of the change rate, blah, 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 blah. So we can think of yeah, that this is going up to some maximum. Yeah, and here we do not have, we have the end deviation, derivation of the nth grade. Okay. So this might be. There's also the possibility 
that not the change rate, but whatever happened. Yeah. Let's think about, so this is, my system is a bucket, yeah, and my input is a water, water running in, yeah, and my output is the fill height of the bucket. Yeah. So the fill height representing the sum of all the water which was ever going in there. So it might not only be the duration, it might as well be, it might as well be the integral. And of course, it might as well be scaled. And also in this direction, we can think of, yeah, we can think of integrating it not one time, we integrate it several times. Okay? So this might influence the output. So our output is influenced by the input, only by the size of the input, or by the change rate of the input, or the history of the input. Okay? This is. We're not influencing the output, we are also influencing the change rate of the output, maybe. Yeah? So this means, here, I also, also can write a plus and say, I'm changing the output, yeah. and of course, there is also a factor in front, yeah. and there might be several changes, yeah. so there is a Tn, And there is always, there is also the end. So, my input, the change rate of the input, the history of the input, is influencing the output and the change rate of the output. Not the, 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 the history of the output is not influenced because it's history already. This thing here is called a differential equation. Okay. Differential equation. I will write it one more time for you that you can read it better and I will use a thinner a thinner pen. Okay. So Tn Here I forgot this n. Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> of course. Okay. Here in this equation, I also added the second derivation here and here, and also the second integral here, huh? just for reference. So this is the characteristic differential equation, this is a differential equation, differential equation, which is describing the system, how an output is influenced by the input. So somewhere in there, there's transfer, is the transfer function hidden. Why? Have we only select here plain numbers? Yeah. This is easy because since these are plain numbers, fixed numbers, yeah. so the, if this is 2, then it's 2. It will not change. This means this is a linear differential equation. Remember, we said our system theory shall only cover linear systems.
Okay, this is why we are allowed here to just write some numbers, yeah, some fixed numbers, yeah, linear system. Also, none of these values are influenced by the time. This also means this is time invariant. So the system will not change during time. Yeah. So this looks really, really complicated, right? Yeah. But always keep in mind, for a real system, we don't need all those terms. This is just the common form. Just. This is the common form. Let's make, let's make an example. I'll put this away. And I will try to, to, to show you my example. Yeah. So we do have a cooling. We need to cool something. Yeah. So there is a special form cooling stuff. Yeah. Cool body. And underneath, underneath, there is some heat source. Yeah? So probably there is a chip or something like this, yeah? which needs to be cooled, like our CPU, for instance. Okay? And this body, this cooling body here, yeah? this cooler, we know it's made from aluminium. And we know the mass of our aluminium is 0 0.7 kilograms. Okay? 0 0.7 kilograms. And the volt capacity of our aluminium is 897 joule by kilogram at Kelvin. What does it mean? I would need 897 Joule to warm up 1 kilo of aluminium, 1 Kelvin. Okay, And here we do have a thermal resistance. Yeah? So we, that the warm, the warm from the, our heat source is not going perfectly to the aluminium. There is a thermal resistance. And this is also given 1.1 Kelvin per Watt. Yeah. So if there is 1 Watt, yeah, there's 1.1 Kelvin difference between. And we want to know, we want to know, there is, here we have some loss, power loss. Yeah. This needs to be cooled. Yeah. This is some electrical part. It has a certain loss and these power losses are producing warmth and this warmth needs to be cooled by aluminium. Yeah? Now these power losses are traveling to the aluminium, the aluminium gets hotter and then the aluminium starts to radiate the heat. 1.1 yeah? kilowatt a Kelvin by, by, by watt. Yeah? This means we need 1.1 degree above surrounding temperature to get away 1 watt. Okay. So we need and we need the output. What we want to know is the excessive temperature of the aluminium. How hot will the aluminium get if we have a certain power loss? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this as a system. Okay. Let's produce the transfer function. Let's start with our power equation. Yeah. So this means my added power 
must must equal my subtracted power. The added power comes from here, yeah, and the subtracted power is the radiation power. Okay. This means my radiation power is my temperature, excessive temperature, yeah, divided by my thermal resistance here. This is my power which can be drained by this aluminium. Yeah? And my total power is the added power minus the subtracted power. Okay, so my added power is nothing more than this verlust, uh, the, the power, uh, minus we add this amount of power. Yeah, this means the added power is this here. Yeah. We do radiate this amount of power, yeah, this here. This means we have it here. Then, this is the power which is heating up my aluminium. Okay, this is the power. If this if this equation is given, there is no heating up. Yeah? If this total power is not zero, yeah, then we are heating up or cooling down. Yeah? And we have the warmth of the aluminium, the content, the, yeah? which, which means the temperature change of the aluminium multiplied by the capacity of the aluminium, multiplied by the mass of the aluminium, of course. Okay? And this is nothing more than the power yeah, multiplied by the change of time. So this is the, this is the thermal energy and this is power multiplied by time. Okay, so this means the power is the temperature change of the aluminium divided by the temperature by the time in which this temperature change is was happening simply bring this to the other side okay and now I make the transfer from this delta to differential temperature change yeah. this is the power this is the temperature change and of course and of course this power here which is heating up the aluminium is this power here so i can write And here I also can write excelsis, yeah, because the change of the temperature is of course the change of the over temperature, yeah, dt multiplied, multiplied. This is now this term, this is this total, yeah, and this equals Now I separate, now I separate the variables. Yeah. This means my, now I write in black 
black because I think it should be displayed very this is minus not plus this to the other side plus This is my differential equation, okay? On one side, I have the input. On the other side, I have the output. I will multiply this all with RTH. I will take this from last time. Yeah? I will multiply this with RTH. So this means RTH multiplied by PV this term equals yeah, plus Okay, now let's uh, compare. This here is my output. So this thing here is my output. And this here is my input. If we are comparing those, the common, the common, differential equation and this differential equation we see okay this is the input this must be RO this year because it's this RO multiplied by the input and this here there is nothing that's correct and the first this here Is this T1? That's this. Yeah. You see, out of this huge differential, common differential equation, we only used some and can describe our aluminium heating body. Yeah. This is so we had a physical issue. We would have a physical problem. We did some mathematical calculation of this, and then we can fill it into our system theory. Okay. We just have to find the correct parameters. So this is T1, this constants, and this is R0, this constant. Let's calculate. Let's calculate T1. Is here we said or T1 is RTH 1.1 Kelvin by watt multiplied by 897 Joule by kilogram and Kelvin multiplied 0 0.7 kilograms what does it mean kilograms is away kelvin is away joule and watt this is watt seconds here yeah watt is away what less left is seconds and if we calculate this we will see it's 690.69 seconds the so-called time constant in this case we will get to this we we'll get to this yeah but and r0 r0 is 1.1 1 .1 
kill me by what? It's the same as Artia. And suddenly we have transferred one physical problem into our system theory. Yeah? Just by calculating the coefficients. So it all ends up in differential equation, linear differential equations with constant uh, with constant coefficients. If you are mathematically skilled, you can solve this. If it's getting more complicated, it's also for skilled people quite an issue. Yeah? Others have encountered this issue as well. And so ways were developed on how to deal with differential equations with yet another approach. Yeah? This other approach is called Laplace transformation. This will be the topic of our next video, the Laplace transformation. This is some sort of making it easier, I don't know, different. Yeah? And a little bit easier to calculate, of course. It's making it more difficult to understand, but it's easier to calculate. Yeah? So it's a sort of detour. And this detour is called Laplace transformation. We will get to this with our differential equation and see what the result is. But this is then topic of the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.